What is going on guys? Matt Downs with Daily Grind Fantasy Sports here to give you a tutorial video on NFL using Fantasy Cruncher. In this video, we'll be covering a ton of topics, but most importantly, we'll be covering strategy, stacking, and also maximizing your upside in terms of a contest selection. First, we'll be taking a look at Lineup Rewind and Fantasy Cruncher, taking a look at the exact optimal of past NFL contests dating back to last season. Once we have those optimals, we'll be taking a look at trends, patterns, and strategy in terms of the optimal winning lineups for those specific contests. And then once we have all that knowledge, we'll be taking it a step further, applying it towards your Fantasy Cruncher settings. And if you don't have Fantasy Cruncher, I highly recommend you sign up for it. If you don't, we will be talking about the strategy perspective of things. And now let's go ahead and take a look at this very first week one optimal lineup. This was from last season, and this was a 12 game slate. Keep in mind, this is the the exact optimal this isn't the optimal for specific contests um, we'll be taking a look at the million dollar maker here in just a second but let's just go ahead and go over the lineup here real quick before we do anything else russell wilson at the quarterback hines was the running back josh jacobs robbie anderson uh, calvin ridley thielen goddard uh, Deontay Adams and the Saints. $49,100 were used. And now let's go ahead and take a look and see if there's any patterns here. Russell Wilson in the captain spot was paired. It looks like a game stack here with Calvin Ridley, but also very interesting. Russell Wilson made it into the optimal, but none of, his, none of his wide receivers did. So that leads me to expect either one, he threw the ball around to, uh, to five different wide receivers and they all caught touchdowns or he rushed a lot in this game maybe he got a rushing touchdown let's actually take a look here week one he got rushing no he did not he passed the ball for 322 yards got four touchdowns probably had a touchdown to every single wide receiver on this roster uh, they would have had to beat out robbie anderson at 28 points calvin ridley 36 Thielen 34 to make it in there so um Again, like I said, his wide receivers benefited off of Russell Wilson having, having a very good game, but not one specific wide receiver. But one thing I did know, uh, know this here, is that Calvin Ridley made it in over those wide receivers, which I just alluded to, and he was actually the second highest wide receiver in terms of scoring on the slate. So this also leads me to believe that this game was a very high scoring game. Let's actually just double check. Uh, the uh, final score was 38 to 25, so a pretty high scoring game here in terms of the NFL. Um also looking here, we had Robbie Anderson, Calvin Ridley, Thielen. So we had Thielen and also Devontae Adams make it into the lineup. So that leads me to, to, to expect here that Green Bay and the Vikings had a very high scoring game. Let's actually confirm that. Uh, 34 to 43. So let's take away a, a few things here from this optimal lineup, this exact optimal. That there was a wide receiver QB stack from a same game. And then there was two wide receivers that made it from... Uh, the exact same game so two game stacks not wide receiver quarterback stacks exactly all right so that's what I've, I've taken away from this exact optimal and now let's take a look at the optimal for the million dollar maker and as you can see did not it, it, it looks nothing pretty much nothing like the exact optimal so very interesting we have matt ryan who was from that exact same game from seattle atlanta um 27.9 points he was paired with calvin ridley took advantage of that and then also had DK Metcalf in there. So it looks like a three person stack in that game stack. We go down the list. Mostert um, is not paired with anybody else, it seems. Then we have Josh Jacobs, also not paired with anybody else there. And then we have TJ Hawkinson from the, the Chicago Detroit game, not in there. And then we also had Goddard, who did make the actual optimal. But I only see one game stack here. Now, keep in mind, there's 28,000 people in here. Um, and this made the optimal with one single game stack. It looks like uh, there wasn't a secondary stack or anything. It was just one single game stack. 244.6 points. You probably won't ever get that high of a score. Uh, that's a very, very high score in uh, NFL. Looking over, and, and, and I want to take this a step further, and now we're taking a look at a smaller contest, 144 people, I believe. 136 people. Okay, so relatively small. And we'll see what the top guy, and, and by the way, this was the, the world championship qualifier so a bunch of sharks are in here so we're going to take a look here at what some of these sharks were doing so this was from the exact same week we had matt ryan at the quarterback position paired with julio julio was one of his wide receivers also kevin ridley did he come back with any seattle guys he sure did lock it all right and then we had do we have anybody else here nope we have four total players from that one single game let's see if there's any secondary stacks we have boston scott antonio gibson they're from the same game and then we also have goddard so we have three people so it looks like we have we have a combination of 
two total games in this lineup with one one off with Devontae Adams, and he happened to be very high owned. So Devontae Adams went off for 44.6 points, was the highest scoring player on the slate. And then we have two total game stacks, and this made the optimal with that small of a contest of 136 people. You won't see this making the optimal, obviously, in the Million Dollar Maker with 206 points because the highest scoring uh, game was 244 points. So, what does this tell me? First of all, this tells me that these Sharks are game stacking, and they're also doing that with two different games. They're having two different stacks in their lineups. But the Million Dollar Maker, and I can just prove this to you guys, um, Awesomeo here, and if you guys know him, he's one of the top Sharks, um, did do a... Uh, game stack here Trubisky with Allen Robinson and did not have another Detroit guy and then he had a bunch of one offs because he knows and I'm assuming this because he is very good at contest selection that very aggressive game stacks won't make the optimal in very big contests okay if you need to follow me again go ahead and rewind the video very big contests will not have a very aggressive game stack or game stacks in their lineups as you can see here he did not aggressively stack but in smaller ones, people were a bit more aggressive. And keep in mind, these guys are all sharks because they're very good fantasy players. Um, scrolling down here, I know this guy's a shark. Cam Newton, uh, did he pair him with anybody? He sure did. Edelman, and then also a Miami guy here, a Miami wide receiver. So there's a game stack there. Did he have any secondary stacks? Minnesota, Green Bay. Nope, not there. Philly, Detroit. Oh, no, he did. He had he had Dalvin Cook and Devontae Adams, so he also had a secondary stack. All right, so I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to go through every single week and lineup rewind. I'm going to assume that you guys believe me here, and, and after looking at a smaller sample size and even taking a look at some of these, these Sharks lineups, that when it comes to NFL, stacking is important. Um, correlated stacks, wide receiver, quarterback stacks, even tight ends, obviously, if they're a, a catching tight end, um, a, a tight end built like a, a wide receiver type of player like Travis Kelsey, Goddard. Um, those types of stacks are obviously very important in smaller contests and, and mid-sized contests. But when it comes to the million dollar maker, you're probably not going to win a big contests unless those two teams that you're stacking go off for 50 plus points it's just not going to happen um, there's way too many teams to take into consideration similar to what we see in mlb like mlb contests like you won't see an optimal mlb lineup sometimes be completely five three stacks because there's so many teams playing on those specific slates same kind of thing can be said here for nfl so what do we do with that knowledge first of all contest contest selection is the most important thing when it comes to nfl Playing smaller contests are my favorite thing to do. Mid-size, you know, under a thousand people, um, as you saw with that contest at 136 people. I would have loved to play those types of contests um, last season long, and I did. And capitalizing on those stacking, uh, the stacking upside of all these games. All right, now let's take everything that we just found out from lineup rewind with the secondary stacks, primary stacks, and apply it towards any slates going forward. And what you should be doing. In terms of lineup construction, fantasy cruncher settings, all that good stuff. So first bit of advice, if you're playing the million dollar maker, which I already know a lot of you will, please, 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 uh, if you're going to max it out, don't game stack as aggressively as um, as what we've seen in the smaller contest. I, I First of all, I, I don't think I've played the million dollar maker without a free lineup. Um, usually I have tickets to redeem for those. Other than that, I really don't play it because it's the lottery. It, it's a waste of money. There's 300,000 people that will be playing this in week one. I recommend don't playing that. I recommend sticking to smaller GBPs. Uh, I think I threw an extra P in there. GPPs um, and aggressively stacking because you're increasing your upside. You're increasing your chances to, to beat the others that aren't doing that, especially in the smaller entry contests. So what do the Fantasy Cruncher settings look like? First of all, there's different ways to achieve this in Fantasy Cruncher. The first way you can do it is team stacks. And this is probably the least efficient way to do it because you're stacking you know up to four or five players you can't change the amount of people that you have in these stacks which i don't like like i don't want a guaranteed four people in my in my stacks i don't want a guaranteed three a two and any more or less than that i, I want a loose uh, a loose stack of some of these players because you know guys like lamar jackson aren't going to be throwing to the wide receivers as much as another team that has a passing heavy quarterback and that's reflective in the ownership so i don't want an exact stack of uh, a four stack of the baltimore ravens with 
you know, the wide receivers and Lamar Jackson because guess what? He's probably not going to be throwing the ball as, as much as these other wide receivers. So the team stacking tab, you can technically use it, create stack. I, I'm wasting time at this point. Four, five, three. You can go ahead and, and aggressively stack that way. You can even uncheck the amount or the, the, the positions in your stacks. Sure, you can get, go ahead and get away with that. But that's not the preferred way. There's two more preferred ways. The auto group creator and group, you can automatically set to specific players, quarterbacks um, that are in a lineup that are grouped together. So for instance, you can make a key player. I'll just go ahead and do it. I can make a key player of Patrick Mahomes. And then now I can go ahead and check Tyreek Hill and add him in there. So this, I'm not making him a key player. Hold on. And now when I have this group enabled, whenever Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback, guys like Tyreek Hill, uh, Pringle, Hardman are now in your group, which is very, very efficient. And you can fine tune your stacks. And like what I was referring to with Lamar Jackson um, and some of the wide receivers, like you don't even have to have a group for Lamar Jackson. And this way you can fine tooth, uh, go, go through a fine tooth comb and go between all your, or go with all your stacks and, and you can edit the certain players in and out of your, your stacks, which I think is a great way to do it. And this is one of my preferred ways to do it. And it really depends on the slate and how, uh how lazy i am and i generally take a lot of time to go ahead and do this before nfl sunday but the easiest and probably most efficient way to do this and uh you'll, you'll see a lot of the sharks do this exact same way um is use the position stack uh tab here and i went ahead and added all the rules here so you guys can pause the video if you want you can take note of this but this is going to ensure that i have a qb stacked with at least a wide receiver tight end at least two of them and then coming back with at least one running back wide receiver or tight end from the same game so this is forcing a primary stack to have at least three players um as long as a quarterback is taken from that game um of of a similar position or of a position of a wide receiver tight end or a running back in that same game all right so let's just use this stacking rule um we don't have any groups enabled i'll come back to the groups here because there's a very good um tool you can use in the auto generated group tab um to ensure that you have a secondary stack as well but this is ensuring that i have a primary stack so Let's, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go ahead, head over to general. I'm putting my stack randomness or my randomness overall at 5,000%. Let's go ahead and put on max unique to three. Um, we'll make the minimum salary 48,000. Sure. And let's just test this out. Calculate. All right. It's finished. Let's now sort by salary just so it's easier to look at all right now let's go ahead and double check to make sure that this rule was applied in each one of these lineups we have teddy bridgewater with jerry judy fan is there anybody from the giants nope that's fine um we have teddy bridgewater we have another it looks like the broncos are going to be a very popular stack but i'm assuming that's because teddy bridgewater is forty eight hundred dollars we have judy fant we have murray with hopkins no Tennessee players, Sam Darnold, Jets, Anderson. We have two, we have three players here from this game. So let's just hope that the Carolina Panthers score a lot for that stack. Uh, and then we have Cincinnati. So we have Kirk Cousins with Madison, um, Thielen, Jefferson, and then coming back here with T. Higgins. So he made it into there. And in that stack, we have a lot of the Falcons. Da, 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 da. Okay, so I like this one. So Zach Wilson, if this game is high scoring in general, he's passing to Crowder more and then coming back here with a game stack of McCaffrey. So those stacking rules apply for game stacks and they'll come back with a, an additional player from that game assuming that they, that uh that game is high scoring that would be very very good for that stack so that's the first and simplest way to do primary stacking here for nfl but there's another way to do this and you'll need a pro um you'll need a pro membership for fantasy cruncher if you want to do it this final way let me go ahead and get rid of all the lineups because it's making my computer go slow or at least my web page slower let's go to advanced options we're going to head over to the positional stacks we're going to get rid of all that and then head over to groups we're going to go to the auto group creator and i already have the settings set up for this what i am going to do is force a primary stack here with the auto group creator and you guys again can uh screenshot this you can do whatever you want but essentially it's doing the exact same thing as the stacking the positional stacking tool except i'm going to change this to three and all i have to do is hit auto create groups with the rules that i just applied here 
And this now applies all of the players from the same game here with Roethlisberger. And it now forces me to use at least three players from this group. Very, very crucial. And again, the exact same way that we just did it before with the other tab, the positional stacks. But now let's talk about the secondary stacks. Let's now go ahead and get rid of all these rules. And if I want a secondary stack, as we saw, which made the optimal um, in that smaller GPP, I'm going to go ahead and apply this to a wide receiver above five um, fantasy points. I'm going to include either a running back, wide receiver, or tight end from the same game against separately uh, than the primary stack. And let's go ahead and auto create groups. So now I'm looking at a folder of each positional player um, that's over five points is now going to be to be uh, uh, grouped up with another wide receiver running back or tight end from that same game. But it's also independent of this folder here who now has well, th this is the primary stack uh, grouping folder. Now it's independent of that. So I should have two separate game stacks in my lineups let's go ahead and double check that here and go ahead and crunch 500 lineups all right and i'm now going to check to make sure the logic makes sense i only stopped at 196 um let's go ahead and sort by salary again and make sure that these lineups have at least two game stacks i also noticed when I did my grouping, I set at least three players in my my secondary stack. If I'm really doing this, I'm saying at least two because I don't want two aggressive stacks, but the logic still makes sense here. So let's take a look. Zach Wilson paired with Moore Davis, and let's look for secondary stacks. He also has, this also has Christian McCaffrey in it. Let's make sure that there's a secondary stack. There sure is. Uh, Moore and AJ Brown. All right, let's check the second one. We have Joe Burrow with, uh, looks like, Cincinnati and Minnesota coming back with Mike Williams, McLaurin, and Logan Thomas. Like I said, these are very aggressive stacks. And another thing that you can do is uncheck everything and you can manually check the stacks here. So like, let's say for instance, I wanted combos. Um, it shows you the, the lineups that appeared in uh, your, your crunches. Uh, it shows the four, three stacks. It shows the four, two stacks of these two teams. Um, and you can literally go through and now I'm guaranteed to have a Minnesota New Orleans stack um, a, a, a game stack of Minnesota, Cincinnati, and then also Green Bay, and then uh, New Orleans. So that's another way to do it. I like to do this and manually check my stacks before I do anything. And I'm not going to go off on a tangent here about lineup uh, construction and contest selection. We have so many videos out on our YouTube about that, but it really comes down to choosing the specific stacks that make sense in your contest. So for instance, if I'm playing a 20,000 person GPP, I want low owned stacks. I'm probably not going to choose it looks like a lot of minnesota and a lot of denver broncos are appearing in my stacks i'm probably not going to stack those two games um at least for those specific contests because i want lower owned stacks to maximize my upside but again not going to go into that too much but that's it guys that's how you use use uh fantasy cruncher to your, your advantage here for the nfl season if you guys did enjoy this content please do it that subscription button notification bell and of course smash that like button for all of our future nfl content with all that being said have a great rest of your day and let's cash